to begin today with a personal disclosure, and that is there are times when I'm able to live with self-centeredness leading the way. Not a very flattering thing to say, is it? Sometimes I can just be a selfish guy. Now, the sad thing also is that we could say the same thing about you. There are times when you have your self-centeredness that can just kind of uh, pick up inside of your personality and just camp out where you don't want it to be there, but there it is nonetheless. Now, there are some individuals whose self-centeredness becomes so deeply entrenched and ingrained in the way that they do life that it just runs away with them. And the further you go down that spectrum, then it can turn into a very strong narcissistic pattern. Those of us, though, who are aware of that, we own it, we claim it, we recognize it for what it is, we see it as being something that's not desirable, and then we do something constructive about it, we exercise self-restraint, then we're able to keep that self-centeredness to a level where it's not going to be the primary thing that drives us, and then we're able to allow the healthy stuff to come through. Narcissists, though, uh, like I say, their self-centeredness is very much at the, uh, the center of who they are. They're very enamored with themselves and their cravings and their wants. They have a real high level of entitlement and give me this and give me that. And they can manipulate to get whatever it is. And there's one really common characteristic that goes along with this that uh, tells us if an individual is going deeper and deeper into the pattern of narcissism, and that's the, uh, the characteristic of self-indulgence. Now, when I talk about self-indulgence, I'm talking about behaviors that, that actually, uh, you, you actually knowingly feed uh, some of your self-absorption. Now, as a very simple example, I wonder if there are times when you're sitting at a nice meal and you're feeling full as you eat your meal and you think, I, I need to stop. I'm going to keep going. And there's some times when we overeat. Well, there are times when that self-indulgence can happen, but some people will overeat and overeat to the extent that it becomes gluttonous and they are, their health suffers. Some people, uh, they, they get kind of caught up in their self-indulgence and they develop eating disorders and it, uh, it's something that can be very self-destructive. Or there are times when we want to spend money on some things. It's okay to want to spend money on a personal pleasure or some sort of something that's going to give you a feel-good experience. But there are times when self-indulgence can take over there where people can spend so much money that they take themselves into financial ruin or uh, they're very uh, greedy in the way that they approach uh, life and material things. Some people are self-indulgent in the sense that they can be lazy. It's like, yeah, I know there are a lot of folks out there that want me to help them out with things. I don't feel like it. I don't want to. Sometimes your self-indulgence can be the way you watch television. You have a Netflix series that you want to, uh, to watch. And so you wind up staying up way later than you need to because you just can't stop yourself. Well, here comes the next one. Let's just do that. And that would be self-indulgent. Many times self-indulgence comes, uh, uh, comes upon us in the sense that we have a, a, th uh, a hunger for thrilling behavior to the extent that it can actually become dangerous. Or sometimes the self-indulgence can come in the sense that you have no sense of time and you don't really care how your time management skills uh, uh, are generated with other individuals. Uh, many times the self-indulgent behavior goes into the direction of addictions. Uh, if you have a drink of alcohol, okay, one, two drinks, okay, that's fine, moderation. There are many individuals, two might as well be ten because they just can't stop themselves. And uh, an occasional drink becomes daily because they don't want to stop themselves. The same thing with recreational drugs and things like that. Sexually, some people can have self-indulgence to the extent that there's a great insensitivity that can be there with other individuals. And that can become addictive with uh, pornography and with promiscuity and things of that nature. Do you get an idea uh, what I'm talking about Individuals want to have a thrill, they want to have a high, they want to have a self-gratification right now, and the, the more that those kind of behaviors take off, then, uh, then it, it leads us down towards uh, narcissism. Now, in addition to these kind of behaviors, emotionally we can be self-indulged. As an example, the way people manage anger. There, there are times when you can feel angry and you can think, I need to get this out of my system. The self-indulgent person's like, oh, I'm getting it out and I don't care what happens. And so they go to their place of anger over and over and over in their attempt to satisfy oneself to the extent that they begin thinking, and I don't really care what this does to other individuals. 
Uh, and so they can have rages or they can be punishing because it's all a part of that entitled self-indulgent element there as well. And so uh, and, and there's kind of an, an attitude where that person's thinking, do you know who I am and you know what kind of treatment I deserve? And there can be that deservedness, and again, that entitlement. Uh, the the self-indulgent behavior uh, indicates that that individual is looking for something in the moment that says, uh, I need to feel good right now. And, and frankly, there's an emptiness in there because I don't have anything on the inside of me to give me my sense of gratification. So I have to find it from a substance or an experience or an expression. And that's what we uh, are referring to. Uh, they indulge more and more with whatever makes them feel proper in the moment or, or uh, pleased in the moment. And enough is never enough. Now, I've mentioned that there are five different uh, elements of self-indulgent behavior that can actually bring a narcissist down. And what I mean by that, it can just make them very ineffective in the way that they do life to the extent that they dig themselves into a hole where people think, you know, I don't need to be with this person anymore. And so let me see if I can go through these five ways that self-indulgent behavior brings a person down. First, let's acknowledge self-indulgent behavior is very short-term in nature. In other words, self-indulging people don't think about the long-term ramifications of their choices. You know, if whether it's overeating or overdrinking or you know, over screaming and all of that, when you're self-indulgent, you're not thinking, "What's this going to do in the long run to my body or to someone else and to my relationships or my uh, interactions with others, my business, all the rest, my financial well-being? What's it going to do?" And the self-indulgent person says, I don't know and I don't care. All I know is I feel what I feel in the moment. And because of that, they, uh, they tend to become victim of the long-term uh, difficulties that tend to show up by not thinking about it. Or a second way that this behavior brings the narcissist down. And that is these individuals minimize the impact of their behavior upon other individuals. They have an, I don't care attitude, whether it's their over drinking, I don't care what it does to my family or overspending or uh, all of the rest. It's like right now in this moment, it, it doesn't matter to me. And as a result, uh, they tend to lose relationships. They tend to have less and less influence and they wind up with even more anger or loneliness or depression or you know agitation toward other individuals. It pulls them down and makes them that much less effective in life. A third way that self-indulgent behavior brings a narcissist down, and that is the behavior itself eventually begins to own that person. Uh, yeah, many times, you know, their, their behavior becomes so addictive that they just keep doing it over and over and over, knowing that it's going to have a bad effect. And one of the, the classic signs that uh, you're dealing with a person that has addictive self-indulgence is they'll say things like, I can stop anytime I want. Okay, have you stopped? Will you stop? Do you choose to stop? Well, some, some other time, but not today. Uh, That's not looking too good. The behavior, the self-indulgence owns that person uh, to the extent that uh, uh, they, they're actually going according to uh, that, uh, that old habit pattern as opposed to well-conceived choices. A fourth way self-indulgence brings down a narcissist is that it, it represents a form of self-care when in fact, it actually leads to uh, self-destruction. Uh, the more you get into that self-indulgence, you may be thinking, well, this is going to make me feel good right now. But ultimately, you destroy yourself. Uh, you think you're creating comfort. You think you may be gaining compliance from others uh, when in fact, it's the opposite of all of that. And then fifth and finally, we can say that self-indulgence brings a person down uh, because ultimately they develop a, a reputation as untrustworthy. You know, over time, when uh, when that self-indulgent person just keeps doing what they do, people roll their eyes at them. They walk away. They think, you know, I don't want to have anything more to do with you. So I, I want you to understand that uh, all of us have a capacity to be self-absorbed, uh, self-included, but then those of us who realize that know, you know, this will bring you down. This will just destroy your life. And I'm hoping by understanding this, you can have a conclusion that says, I want to go in a much better pattern. 
Now, let's think about some of that uh, when we uh, think about a non-self-indulgent lifestyle. Let me give you a few thoughts on that before we close. I like my life better when I'm able to help someone else's life go better. I like my life better when I'm uh, upbeat and encouraging. I like my life better when I find joy in simple activities. I like my life better when I show respect for the reason, uh, for no other reason except that I just like being respectful. I like my life better when I'm free from secrets. I'm an open book. I like my life better when my mood is steady, even in the midst of, of strain and difficulty. Uh, or when I don't get my own way. I like my life better when I have a solid track record for being a person of my word and having an integrity. I like my life better when I'm able to celebrate someone else's good fortune and achievements. I like my life better when I'm known as being fair and non-judgmental. I like my life better when I respond to conflict in a healing way. You see, there's an entirely different way of life that's non-self-indulgent that actually gives you what you want, which is goodness and joy and calmness and peace. Those are characteristics that the narcissist doesn't know how to attain. Uh, remember, one of the things that I uh, emphasize on my channels, and that is Dr. C, D-R-C, stands for Dignity respect, civility. Let's see if we can aim for those kinds of characteristics, and those are non-self-indulgent kinds of things. The deeper you go into self-indulgence, the less impactful you're going to be in the lives of other individuals in a positive kind of way, and the less satisfied you're going to be. So let's, let's recognize that for what it's worth. It's something the narcissist uh, can't come to terms with, and they self-destruct ultimately. I don't want that to happen to you. I do hope that you uh, are provoked to do some good thinking because of the videos. Uh, you'll see beneath this video that we have a subscribe button. And if you've not already done so, I would invite you to hit that subscribe button and we'll keep you apprised of new videos that come along. We also have an email list that I would invite you to join. We have bonus videos and, and articles and promotions that you get through that. If you're in a place where you need some online counseling, we have an availability for that. There's a link beneath this uh, that can help you in that regard. And then also we have my online uh, workshops, uh, video workshops. We have my books, and then we even have coffee mugs. How about that? So all of that said, uh, I, I hope that you examine yourself and can learn how to have self-restraint with regard to your indulgences. And in doing so, I, I wish you peace and goodness. That being said, I will see you next time.